There's talks at DerbyCon? <laughs> so show of hands, who here is still sober? Who here is still drunk from last night? I know you are, Render. <laughs> yeah, come on in, we got more plenty of room. Nobody here bites unless you ask and give consent. Yeah, even then you gotta be showered first before we bite you. So, I'll make this easier because what the hell. So, automating Hashtopolis. Let's go through the standard disclaimers and all that usual crap before we get this going. Video's all good to go, I assume. Am I good? Oh, yeah. Cool, thanks. So, disclaimer, this talk has not been vetted by IBM, IBM Security, X-Force Red. Opinions expressed in this talk are mine and mine alone. I'm also not speaking on behalf of Hashcat, Hashtopolis, Team Hashcat, Church of Wi-Fi, SantaShare Prime, the Illuminati, or Bigfoot. No warranties expressed or implied. I'm not responsible for any house fires, breaking your Hashtopolis instance, killing your database, or otherwise doing something stupid with the API, because you can do that, and I'm also not responsible for getting your ass fired. Please seek the assistance of a professional before doing this in production. Or just YOLO and YOLO. So, who am I? I'm Evil Mog, Bishop of the Church of Wi-Fi, hacker for X-Force Red, member of Team Hashcat, and I'm also Rear Admiral Evil, apparently, when I'm down at SCCCDC, because why not? I was also Mohammed bin Evil and a few other funny ones. Why are you here? Well, A, you're obviously somewhat sober. Hashtopolis is awesome. Hashtopolis manages Hashcat. Hashtopolis can be automated with JSON, and that's right, you can be lazy. So first of all, who here knows what Hashcat is? Good, you're in the right talk. Who here knows what Hashtopolis is? All right, for those of you who don't know what Hashtopolis is, it is an automation framework for managing Hashcat. This is not an intro to Hashtopolis talk, so some of this stuff might go over your head. I'm sorry, but their documentation is fantastic. And one of the guys who's on the project is sitting right there, so he can you know, answer other questions and you can yell at him if required. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, some basic terminology. In, the hash, or in Hashtopolis, an agent is a Hashcat worker node. Trust is an agent that can run secret hash lists when you check the box that says this Hashcat is, or this hash list is secret. Secret is a hash list that can't be sent to untrusted agents. A task is a Hashcat job. A hash list is a list of hashes. Hashcat's an awesome password cracker. Thanks, Adam. That guy's awesome. And Hashtopolis manages Hashcat to distribute work with a special thanks to S3, Hops, WinXP, and uh, the rest of the Backstreet Boys. So, to use Hashtopolis, first of all, or at least do some automation, you first have to install Hashtopolis. Um, there's the GitHub repo, reasonably easy. I might even post the slide when I'm done this so you guys can all take copies, but feel free to take pictures of the slide deck, no problem. Um, you have to generate an API key, first of all, in order to use Hashtopolis for its automation pieces, so create an API key. You should probably read the user API PDF before you try to automate it with the uh, frameworks we wrote for Python. You make a new director for your project, clone this repo, question marks, and profit. You know, relatively simple for getting started. First thing you do is you create a JSON file. You tell it your endpoint. Tell it don't verify the certificate because YOLO, or you give it a path, have it certify, and you specify an API key. So that's step one. Step two, you need to go test your connection. So here's a simple Python script. You import the Hashtopolis API functions, tell it test the connection, print the results. If you get a success, you are good to go. Anything else, troubleshoot your stuff. This doesn't test your API key, this just tests to make sure that your service is online and running. So the nice part about Hashtopolis automation, these guys spent months listening to me complain until they wrote an API for me. And they did everything in JSON so they wouldn't have to go listen to me complain. So all the you know, bad problems are on my side rather than theirs. So a simple connection test API is tell you want to go section test, request a connection, it gives you a response to success. So you can do this in Ruby, Python, what have you. So, next thing you have to do is make sure your API key works. The Python code here gets a little more complicated. You tell it test connection, test access, print the results. If you get an okay at this point from the test access API, you might be able to do something useful. The error logs sort of work and everything's kind of documented. Under the hood, 
the access check looks like this. We tell it test, tell it a request to access, give it your access key. If it gives you an okay, you're good. If it gives you an error, tells the API key not found. Now, in the Hashtopolis Python bindings, the only two um, access checks that are only two endpoints that don't give you the full JSON output are access check and access test. Everything else gives you the raw JSON for an output so you can parse yourself. I'm not your mother. I'm not doing your parsing for you. So if we want to go create a hash list, for example, so say you've go pulled something out of crack map exec and you wanted to upload it to hash top list, you import your functions, you convert it, you import base64, you open up your hash list, you base64 encode your hash list, tell it create hash list, example hash, set all your various options, you know, is it salt, is it secret, print the results, and you get something like this. Gives you a nice simple okay, not very much uh, error logs unless you do something really stupid. So the cool part about this is you could automate Hashtopolis with, say, Burp, if you were so bored. I mean, we've got Burp Cowboys out there, we've got Pearl Cowboys, we've got our Ruby folks out there. I wrote everything in Python 2 because I'm lazy. Um, Integral was awesome, and he's been porting everything to Python 3, but all the examples in my source code repo are Python 2 at the moment, so I'm sorry, but not really. I like Python 2. So um, creating the hash list in this case, it's a bit more complicated because you have to make sure your options here are set. Um, with the API, there are absolutely no guardrails. So if this thing's going to bomb in hash topless from the GUI, it'll bomb in the API. So the important things to watch out for are your hash type IDs, um, whether you're using brain, and make sure you've got the correct uh, options. So your good option you can do is go test the creation in um, the GUI and then try and recreate it within the API. Cool little trick we can do is quite often you use things like, does anyone here know what PAC is? Pass analysis cracking kit? Sort of? No, okay. So what you can do with PAC is you can go say analyze a hash list and go generate a bunch of hash cap masks. So let's say you generate a thousand of them like the pathwall masks. You might have to go create, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred masks and yeah, you, know, you don't necessarily have to. You can do this through the G or through the AP or through the GUI, but that was a new feature as of earlier this year. Yeah, so the used to have to build this via the API. So this little script here goes through, does a loop through the pathwall masks, for example, and creates a mask for every line in that entry. It's kind of handy in that regard because you can eventually create, like, say, multiple super tasks in the process and automate your setup. Um, the problem is the Hashtopolis database gets a little cranky after three or four upgrades, so you tend to have to recreate it every once in a while. So if you can learn to reset up all your tasks, this is a handy technique. So I've got three or four major attack types. This is one of them. Pathwall's great. This is the most handy thing you will ever use in Hashtopolis. The problem is right now in Hashtopolis, there's no bulk delete or it... There is a bulk delete, but it's glitchy as hell. Sorry, WinXP. Actually, it's S3's problem. I'm not going to lie. So what you got to do is you have to go import your HTTP client functions, list your tasks, loop over your tasks, and delete them all. This saves me so much time during um, the crack of the competition when our entire team in Europe screws up our instance and we have to clear them all out. This one will save you say, some good time. So you can do things like deleting all the tasks, you can create a hash lookup function, so you can make your own little private hash lookup server with a quick little get hash API. It'll return back um, the hash list, it's in the crack position, which is one of my feature requests, um, the actual plain text for it, and give you a quick OK. So you can actually automate in the bash script how to go do quick lookups. And what's cooler is, when, in the next couple of slides, we can do things like get hash list details individually to tell you, hey, what's the status on this? Or even more importantly, we can get all of the hashes for a particular hash list. Now, by default, this is ugly because I say I don't parse the JSON. But you can make this really pretty. Um, great numbers doing get hash list crack and print the hashes. But with a little bit of cleanup, you can use this to go pull all your hash top list options rather than doing copy and paste. So when you're doing crack map exec, for example, and you upload everything to hash top list, want to re-download them back to your local laptop for local parsing, give a quick little import for hash and hashes, print just the hash and the hash in the plain text, and you get a nice little pretty hashcat pot file ready to go for importing the hashcat. This four lines of Python saves me hours. So that's kind of cool. Um, you get your task details, which is handy. So you can you know, tell it, hey, I need to find out what task ID, what dispatch. I mean, everything comes back in straight JSON so you can access it immediately. 
I need to find a Ruby developer so I can port all the bindings to Ruby because I want to put this into Metasploit so you can automatically look up and submit your Metasploit hashes to Hashtopolis and re-download them again. So if you're a Ruby developer, hit me up and we'll go do some magic. It's not a hash manager. It's just being lazy, taking your you know, Metasploit SAM dump, downloading them, cracking them, re-uploading. Hashtopolis is not a hash manager. If you try and use it as one, they will mock you mercilessly in the Discord. This guy. <laughs> if you guys think I'm evil, WinXP is freaking brutal. I'm not going to lie. They mock even me. You guys mock me, don't you? Now and again. Yeah, now and again. Um, you also list your files. This is handy if you want to go find out um, what dictionaries you're in. So if you want to automatically create, say, a set of tasks for this set of dictionaries and then this set of rules, you can get their file names out for you and actually use that for later on funky scripts. So you can listing files is awesome. You can get a user list. That's some really ugly code for seeing who else is on your instance. When you get to a company our size, you have you know, 80 plus people on your Hashtopolis instance and trying to find them all is kind of a pain. So we actually wrote an IDM for Hashtopolis now to reprovision people. So you can handle that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, here's the output example. It's not bad. The cool part is that you need to understand things like what write groups are, last logon is valid. Like If you understand how Hashtopolis works, automating it becomes a lot easier. So I apologize for this not being a Hashtopolis talk, but not many people even know the user API exists. I'm like the only person who submits support tickets for it. <laughs> and they get rather annoyed. This is true. You also create new users. This is handy because what you can do is say, take something like Keycloak, put it in front of Apache, write a Python script so when you authenticate to your corporate active directory, it creates your users automatically in Hashtopolis. I wrote a Hashtopolis user reset tool for our company and in that way if an analyst in say Australia needs to reset their password at 3 in the morning, I don't have to wake up. So that one's a cool one. You can go create your users that way. The important thing is know what write group you've assigned. So Hashtopolis has an API series of write groups and if you assign a user to the wrong group, it makes your access harder later on. Um, the other weird little caveat from this is when you create the user, it doesn't set a password. You have to set the password with an independent API call. So that's what that set user password is. So that script down below actually goes through for every single user in that list that matches that username and then resets their password because I can't call set password users individually. Well, I can, but I'm lazy on my Python match. You can create vouchers. This is handy. So there's a lot of cool talks about people releasing frameworks to say automatically roll up and roll down their AWS services in real time. And the problem is with Hashtopolis, you need an individual voucher per agent. So if you create them all in advance tied to an Ansible script, you could spin up and spin down your whole AWS or Azure infrastructure or soft layer if you're crazy enough. Sorry, IBM. Um, you can print all your vouchers off and go in on this and make things quickly. I actually did this for when we were putting up 300 plus GPUs last year and we lost to CSP. Jerks. <laughs> We we beat you this year, so barely. <laughs> yeah, barely. <laughs> Thank you, Mingo. We all hate you. Um, the other cool thing is, by the way, I'm using this as a bad example. You really shouldn't turn off the donate button until you've donated. But yeah, you know, the first thing I do, I disable the donation banner at the bottom of the Hashtopolis. So I actually automated that into a script. You're welcome. I was the one that was like, that needs to be an yeah, thank you, by the way. So originally they didn't have an option to kill the donation banner. And uh, people may have bitched and uh, my lovely friends here up at the front might have uh, convinced the folks over in Switzerland to change this as an option. So, But please donate to the Hashtopolis project because a certain other group that does a number of things get massive donations. These guys get like nothing. They do it for beer money. So buy them beer. <laughs> Um, the other cool thing is you can actually reconfigure Hashtopolis through the API. So you can go first start off list like what options there are like cracking, YubiKey, fine tuning, UI server, etc. So when you reset your Hashtopolis as often as I do, we can actually do a here's what all the settings are and make sure they don't get touched and played with, which is handy in this DevOps world. You can figure out what configuration configuration items there are that you need. So that's another cool little feature of this talk. And yeah, I will post all this to the GitHub. In fact, I'll probably send the deck as is to the Hashtopolis project and say, here, go hard. Or put on my GitHub repo, either or we'll figure it out. 
Um, this script. This script is gold. You'll all want to take a copy of this. So when you submit a job to Ashtopolis and you have analysts that don't know what they're doing, they tend to submit jobs that will cause all of your agents to die. Or during a competition, you have to go through manually select or pop it in the database and flip all the fields and it's such a pain in the ass. This script goes through, lists all your agents, unassigns all their tasks, disables CPU only if they screwed things up, resets them to trusted, sets their parameters like optimize and workload profile three. You shouldn't really do this, but I like to because I optimize every one of my uh, tasks because most of my jobs are short. And then it resets the agent to active again. So all of a sudden you're jammed up cracking job. Assuming your task isn't broken, you fix the original problem, all your agents spin right back up again and you're good to go. Doing this through the GUI, if you have say 80 plus agents, takes forever. Do it with this, it's done in a minute or two and you're back to operations. You guys really need to make a freaking unassign all reset button in the agent GUI. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I'll go yell at S3 and go pay my fees at uh, whatever conference he's at. My license fees for Ashtopolis is bourbon every year, so. Um, and that's actually a really quick freaking end. I didn't realize it would be this fast. Um, I can go through the user API for specifics, but I do want to thank um, S3 and all the crew, Adam for making Hashcat, uh, donate to the Hashtopolis project, these folks need beer. And does anyone have any questions before we get into the rest of the more shenanigans? No? You guys are either all really drunk and really hungover, or I went really fast and you're all confused, and that's okay. You and your stupid chickens, Render Man. So on that note, thank you all for coming to my talk, and uh, have yourself a good day. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> By the way, I am available for children's parties. Let's go, Mom! Ah, ah. <laughs> All right. So not really, no questions, none whatsoever. Perfect. Enjoy, have fun, and uh, make sure you uh, tip the clown. Read the Bitcoin address. Huh? Read the Bitcoin address. I'm not reading that Bitcoin address. Can you pronounce it? I mean, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> That Bitcoin address is on the bottom of the Hashtopolis project. Download it, donate money to them, because CSP does work for me for free. Thank you.